Hi guys, today's video is an introduction to thirds. Now firstly I just want to look at the types of numbers that we use in junior mathematics and the types of numbers that we deal with are real numbers. And there are two types of real numbers that we deal with and they are rational and irrational numbers. Rational numbers are those that can be represented as a fraction or as a terminating decimal. Irrational numbers then are numbers that have infinite decimals and obviously then can't be represented as fractions. Now infinite recall means that it goes on forever. Alright, so when we're looking at thirds, thirds are irrational numbers and we represent them using a root sign. So just take a moment to consider of these three numbers, which ones are rational, which ones are, and which ones are irrational values. So what you should notice is 125% is a rational value that can be represented as a terminating decimal, 1.25, and 1 over 6 is a fraction, so therefore that must be rational also. And we have this one here, the square root of 5, um, and that would be irrational. If you put that in your calculator, you can see that it will have a never-endable decimal value. Okay, now when we're dealing with thirds, there are a number of rules that we do need to consider. So the first rule is that when we square a square root, we get the value that's underneath the square root. If the value in the square root is squared, then we get that value also. And that's when any of our values are greater than or equal to zero. If we have two values multiplied together beneath the square root, that's the same as each of those being an individual square root. So for example, if I had the square root of 2 times 3, that's the same as writing the square root of 2 times the square root of 3. And for our division, the same principle applies. So if we had x divided by y beneath the square root, that's the same as the square root of x divided by the square root of y. So if we had the square root of 2 divided by 3, that would be equal to the square root of 2 and the square root of 3. Now these three rules are going to be very important in being able to simplify your thirds. Next we're going to look at how we simplify thirds and we do that using square factors combined with using the rule of xy is equal to the square root of x times the square root of y. Now when we say square factors, I'm talking about numbers like 4 and 9 and 16. They're values that have a whole number when you find the square root. Alright, so let's do an example. So we want to simplify the square root of 45. So the first thing I'm going to do is find the factors of 45. So you should know that those factors are 5, 9, 1 and 45. From those we're going to then identify which ones are square factors. So in this case that's 5 and 9. 9 being the square factor because it can be the square root of 9 is 3. So then we're going to write in factor form and that's going to look like the square root of 5 times 9 which is going to equal the square root of 5 times the square root of 9. We're using this rule here. Okay, and then once we've done that, we're going to simplify by finding the square of our 9. So then we can write that as um, 3 times the square root of 5, which can be simply written as 3 square root 5. So therefore, our simplified version of the square root of 45 is 3 times the square root of 5. Now you can put that in your calculator to check. Um, and that's how we simplify a third. Thanks, guys.